Right. They just look like a different font. Yeah, you know, well, when the Roman alphabet is like the Greek alphabet, you know, but there are plenty of Greek letters. We know this because of the Vatican. What? Yeah. <laughs> you remember the Vatican. No, yes. that, that, that we all know Greek. God is a white dude going like this. And then <laughs> Greek everywhere. Right yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. I thought you guys were not awake on Monday. You guys are awake. We're not, like, we're not awake. <laughs> okay. We're just the highest. We're just the highest. We're sleeping or My Mac eye is asleep right now. <laughs> Wait, you mean this is an olive green? All right, look, GM here. So on the right hand side, I'm thinking probably not to change this. This is one of those uh, you sort of see. It's an identity. Remember how we said with identities, most of the time we change it to sines and cosines. Uh, this is probably not the one you want to do. You have a uh, summation formula, or difference formulas for tangent. Then you have what looks to be maybe possibly already a what? What is that called? A double angle formula for tangent or so? Or the difference formula for tangent? What is that? It's when you need your notes, huh? It's when you need your uh, formula sheets here. So it looks like. <clears throat> I think it is a, it looks like a difference formula for tangent because a little minus sign right there. So let's keep with tangent. Let's see what happens here. In fact, um, I'm thinking on the left-hand side, let's work with all this right here on the left-hand side. Let's simplify this as much as we go. Let's see what happens. Maybe we'll get somewhere. How do you get a fraction out of it? I don't know, let's check it out. Cool. And I got I did like this here. Da da da. Let's see, difference. This is a difference quotient between tangent. True, true, maybe. I don't know. If you have your formulas in front of you, you can see it. On Wednesday, I will give you guys those formula sheets like I usually do. So you're good to go there. But there's your difference formula between the two. Minus, and then it'll be a difference between beta minus alpha at that point. So let's see, that would be tangent beta minus tangent alpha. And it's a plus sign between the two with the beta point first. But really, if you multiply tangent beta times tangent alpha, is not the same thing? I don't know. You guys talk to me here. Everything good so far? How many did this one? Did you guys did it? I mean, oh. got an answer. Okay, that's cool. That's good for doing. Well, no, like I didn't get an answer, but I attempted. <laughs> that's cool. Good, good at attempting. All right. I'm thinking the dominators are the same. You agreed? Disagreed, maybe? I think those are the same, right? One plus tangent of alpha times tangent of these two right here really just are the they're like three times four, four times three, right? They mean the same thing because when you multiply them together here. So the denominators actually are the same. So I'm gonna write it as one big denominator. On top, I do have, let's see what I do. I have tangent of alpha minus tangent of beta. And then over here, notice the subtraction symbol. It was subtracting the whole entire fraction. But now that I've moved it as a common denominator, I do have to put parentheses in here now. So it's tangent of beta minus tangent of alpha. Are we good with that? Because it's the subtraction of those two pieces. So I have to include in the parentheses at that point. Jamming. And the question is, does it look like we're heading towards what we need to get to? Well, on the other side, I have my denominator the same now. One plus tangent alpha tangent beta. Now the top question is, will, will that work out on top? I'm thinking so, let's see, tangent, dominator still the same. On top though, I'm going to get rid of that parentheses. So tangent alpha minus tangent beta. And then that little minus sign gets distributed to the first one. And then to the second one, turns it into a positive, are we good? 
and I'm running out of space. Cool. All right. I'm thinking, let's see, put our L, tangent of alphas together. I got, I got this one here and I got this one. Yeah, it looks like it does work out. Those guys put together, let me, oh, that's funny. Turned into funniness here. Are we okay with the two in front now? And then I have two tangent betas that are both negative. Denominator the same. And voila, that little two gets factored out. And I have exactly what I want on both sides now, which is exactly the same. So that is the same thing as what we started off originally on the right hand side. And I am done. Are we good? What do you guys say? Tough one. Okay. Now that you see it, it's pretty easy. That's what I'm saying. No, nope, no one's talking to me. Okay. Um, it's usually easy once you do it. So, if you have this kind of tutorial on the test, I feel like yeah. that would be really helpful. But if you work it out first, first, mm -hmm. I think I will ace your test. Oh, yeah. awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if you did all the problems, uh -huh. I think I would get a pretty good grade. You know what? <laughs> Just to be so kind. <laughs> you know, because I'm kind, I think I'll do that, but I'll just do that Friday. Okay, well, I don't know if that time is really going to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as long as whatever we do on Friday counts for credit. <laughs> yeah. Sure, one point for each one. If you do have questions at all, please get an immediate. Yeah. Right, you should write anything that you <laughs> You just have to write the problems that you got wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're good, good. Let's go with eight. Oh, QED, of course. I forgot QED at the end. Box. There it is. Box. <laughs> or just the box. box, box. <laughs> cool. All right, this one. Now, cosine A is equal to negative 7 tenths in quadrant 3. Yes, my signs are correct this time. Um, and notice real quick here, really just about plugging in the correct formula or using the correct formula, really. Oh, this one, remember, it's a half angle as well. And now we've got to think about this right here. If I'm in quadrant 3 somewhere, If I take half this angle, which quadrant will I come back into? Two. two. So if we want to think about this, it'd be 180 to 270. So half of 180 will get you back to 90. Half of 270 will get you back to 135. So you're going to be sort of somewhere in this little area right here. And you only need that really just to determine the sign on your formula here. So I'm going to go with sine of a over 2 is equal to, in this case, it's going to be a plus sign. Everybody okay with the plus sign? There's my formula. My plus sign's there because I'm going to be in quadrant 2, and sine is positive in quadrant 2. But I've taken half of my angle that's cool. And then all yours to go for it here. So this is one minus cosine A is already given. This is going to be negative seven tenths. And the rest is yours to finish up. Give you guys a head start. Thank 
this one. Let's see, simplify. I'm thinking, let's see, 20 is uh, four times five. So that comes out as a two. So I've separated top and bottom. And how about multiply both sides by root five? 70 times five, whatever that is. Right, you like have that memorized? No, just like right, yeah, math. <laughs> <laughs> Understand. <laughs> Let's see, this 85 reduce, 85 wouldn't reduce because we're back to 17 and 5, which are prime numbers here. I think we're good. There it is. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, denominators are the same. That's one thing. Can I just do? Can I just do a little something here, just out of curiosity here? Let's see. Oof. Okay, let's not try it. Never mind. <laughs> Use the half angle formula to find the exact value of the following. All yours there. Sign 160. Mm -hmm. Well, probably. I'm kind of curious. I'm curious. You're in a lot of trouble because of it. I've got the cat's water. I'm still stained with blood. Ever since the cat murder of 87. I mean, the cat murder himself. So he killed cats because he didn't like them for being too curious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought they were murdered. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid cats always getting my business. Curiosity and what happened. It's understandable. I have one story. Yeah, because now we have curiosity. That's funny. Uh, plus or minus, let's see. B. That's where we're at there. So let's see, when I do this here, sine of 165 would be the same thing as sine of something over two. Is it 330? 330, that would make sense. Uh-huh, 330 time divided by two, 165. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Okay, so then we go back to, first things first is the sine, positive or negative? This guy's still in quadrant two. It is positive, even though the cosine value is going to be negative here to begin with. But I got a positive value here, the square root of one minus cosine of 330 degrees, according to the formula. And we go from there. Right, and then anybody help me out? What is cosine of 330? Positive, negative? Positive, yeah. Square three over two over two, and the fun begins. Hmm. That's why Corinne is not here, huh? Sounds Two. 
Ghana. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'll check. I'll check. Word. That right here. All your definition. Let me check. It's which thing? Two, let's see, making this as two over one. And how about a multiplying by that? We're running out of space. Oh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Two minus root three over four. And can I finish it off up here? Let's see, splitting this off into top and bottom. It comes like this with the square root of four being a two. And I think that's it. That's all you, as far as you can go. So why is cosine not negative? Is it because it's of 330? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, never mind. You guys can all do that. Just answer your own questions. <laughs> nice. Who needs it? That would be really confusing. <laughs> 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 Is it yours like yes? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We'll actually grade our own test too while we're at it. So <laughs> we can just grade our test while we're doing it too. So like, <laughs> dang it, I did that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So who's all to the conversation that I think Johnny got? And I that's need to make sure I'm yeah, getting the inspiration. Like, it's right. not, I would it's steal not. your answer, yeah. but it's too hard. Yeah. Yeah. How did I get a bouncing idea? That's very interesting. All right, let's assume the variables are of positive numbers. Uh, trick functions will be changed, but in the sense of um, like the uh, verification problem, like verify if it's an identity, that one probably would change the, quite a bit. Um, because it's just an identity here. So, but it's gonna be some of the identities that you covered here, but like these problems right here, very similar, just the trig function change. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to find where this is on the homework here, let's see. And then you can go back and find where these types of problems are on the homework. All right, let's go for it though. Let's see, this is uh, let's talk about it just real quick, just to make sure it makes sense here to us after we study the chapter here. So if I just take and I find um the triangle here, right? This would be four, three, and this would be five, right? That does not help me. This would be what? This would be, let's call it A, right? Um, if I were to multiply that by two, I still don't get what I want, right? Because I'm not an angle level, right? 
I should be at an angle level here. So notice if this was this was written out, I would be right here. I would be sine of two. Let's say it's a or alpha or or theta, whatever it is here. Sine of two a. Does that make sense? So if you yourself, you know what? I'm actually going to make a equal tangent inverse of three fourths, whatever a is. I don't know what a is yet. As I look at this formula, I find out this is just really sine of 2a. I don't know what 2a is. I don't know what the angle is, but I do have a formula that gets me sine of 2a becomes 2 times sine of a cosine a. Once I get down to that, then I'm thinking, oh, that's easy now. Because now I just take the cosine value and the sine value of that angle of which the ratios I already know of. Okay, we're good there. Does that make sense? That's so cool. Go for it then. Then it's really just sine of alpha, which is opposite over hypotenuse. Boom. Cosine would just be adjacent over hypotenuse. And I got what I wanted here, which is different from remember the previous ones that we were doing, right? Which was Find the inverse value here. All right, with that, I got a 25 on the bottom, and what is that, 24 on top? I think, yes. Awesome. Good there? Kind of, okay. All right, the gem of this one again is far to going back to sort of see what's what formulas, which formulas would fit here, right? This is an expression of a sum of difference. That's cool. This has to be the product to some formula, right? And I'm looking for the one that says cosine and cosine. And that one, just to write it in, cosine A, cosine B is equal to one half. Cosine of a plus b plus cosine of a minus b. That's the formula I want. And then let's go for it here. So this would be one half. This would be cosine of these guys added together. No problem there. Was that 16 pi? Plus these guys subtracted from one another here. Go with negative two pi. And technically, I fulfilled whatever I was told to do. I now wrote it as a, a sum or difference of two trick functions. Are we good? We keep it just like that. The only other thing that you could do is if you wanted to get rid of that little negative there, cosine is an even function, right? So the negative would just disappear on you. Mm -hmm. It's part of the formula, so it's just there. This is one of those test questions you probably would overthink, right? Like, that's too easy. What am I doing wrong? All right, so this one has a little bit of work to do here. So rewrite this as a, as a product of two, then after that, simplify even though you should get the same exact answer, even if you just did it straight up, right? Go back again. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to this one here, let's see, this would be, this has to be sum to product formula then. Sum to product. Looking for cosine cosine as the sum. So there it is. Cosine of alpha cosine beta two. Cosine of alpha plus beta divided by two. 
multiplied by cosine of alpha minus beta divided by two. Okay, that's the one, making sure. This is two cosine of what, 60 minus 45 over two. Some weird funky angles here. Let's see, what is 60 plus 45? That's what, 105 divided by two? <laughs> what an angle. <laughs> what an angle. <laughs> 50. Is it 52 and a half or not? Yeah, 52 and a half. Cosine of, let's see, that's going to be 15 divided by 2, that's 7.5. All right. Not going to simplify that. That is about as simple as you can get. I'm going to go craziness. So, why can we divide inside the parentheses by 2 for that one? but not for like cosine of A over two, doesn't just equal A divided by two. Say it again, real quick here. So like- You're dividing here? Yeah, we can simplify and divide those angles by two. But when we're like solving for the difference or the half angle formula, this like, then it's like cosine equals A over two. Mm -hmm. And then there's a whole equation for it that we can't just divide a by two. Like, what's the difference? Gotcha. Sure. So this is part of a formula that we have. Okay. And it's a formula that gives you the addition of these two angles here. So we can. So you are allowed to divide by two if it's in the formula. If it's part of the formula. Uh huh. Actually, be getting that angle out of the two. So, right, yeah, yeah, it's not just it's not just these two angles. Let's mean divide by two, and that's it here, because you're plugging into a whole formula that takes you from yeah, an addition property to a multiplication property. <coughs> the fact that there is another formula to show you what happens when you try to divide <coughs> an angle by two makes me think that when we do it in that formula, we're not actually getting an ang that angle divided by two. Uh -huh. Yeah, because like my instinct would be to take that then and say 105 divided by 2 and be like, okay, now I'll put it into the half angle yeah. formula and write it all out in yeah, the half too. angle. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. So I should maybe this right here. Let me cross this out and it'll just be rewrite this as just a product. Because right, I want to know this given as a summation formula, I want you to write it as a product formula. Okay, so the only reason... We, so if we were to write it out all as a half angle formula, mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be hard because it'd be like 105 and it'd be a weird angle, mm -hmm. but would we end up with the same answer? Absolutely. Uh-huh. Okay. So In fact, what's probably going to happen is as you do the work here, as you simplify, keep on simplifying down, you're going to wind up back with cosine of 60 degrees plus, plus cosine, cosine of 45. 45. Okay. As you simplify that. So I'm just trying to like figure out when you can do the divided by two and when you can't just do the divided by two. Oh, oh wait, do we not do the divided by two just because normally we don't want decimal points in the... True, yeah, you can't figure this out anymore because this one would be, um, if I had something like this right here, my goodness, you would say find the, use the double angle formula to find cosine of 105, right? So you know you're gonna do, I'll give instructions to actually do it because then you say, okay, that's gonna be 210 divided by two, and I'm gonna do the 
double angle formula for that one, or the half angle formula for that one. As opposed to this one, it really just says rewrite the rewrite it as a product. Does that help? As opposed to this one is actually part of a formula that you're plugging in. Like alpha becomes 60 degrees, beta does become 45 degrees, and you're just simplifying the stuff inside according to the formula. I don't know if that helps. Does that help? Georgia, I mean, does that help? Kind of, but would there ever be a situation, like what would be a situation where you would want to do the divided by two in a formula? Or is that not just like not a thing? Totally not a thing. Okay. <laughs> Unless you're simplifying according to what has already been here. And then if you guys get stuck on a test, ask me, okay? Like, what is that? Are we going to do we need to go further? How about that? That'd be a better way to do it. Okay. Um, for the calculator part with graphing, my calculator, there's something off of it, or I have something wrong with my graphing. Never, like, I can never get it to zoom out. You know, mm -hmm. I like do the thing that makes it zoom out. Gotcha. So, okay. I don't know what's wrong with my calculator. That's so cool, because let's go to the calculator part. <laughs> Love the transition. Oh, that was so cool. Not like I meant to do that. Like that was your first time. I may have been looking at the next topic. Let's go for it here. So we're looking at a calculator. We want to figure out if it's an identity first. If it is, then we have to prove it. If it's not, we've got to find a counterexample that proves that it isn't. So first things first. Whoa. Go. Is it still up there somewhere? Equation that makes a graph that resembles these three boards. Test is the biggest micro example. I would fail, yeah. I actually would probably do better with the math. All right, let's go for it. If you guys have calculators, uh, not that one, let's go to this one. Y equals. Oh, did you see that it like is not functional? The, the board isn't. Ah, oh, gotcha. Okay. It didn't. I thought it came back here. Yeah, it's just the problem is doing math while watching birds is not. It requires quite some more. There's not something in the hand to be wrong with it. It's just not required me to hear. Mm -hmm. I thought it switched. I thought it fixed itself. Oh. No. 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 It's searching really hard though. Hi. Hey. Hey. No wonder my calculator seems small. Okay, there it is. Boom. A lot better. Mm -hmm. Let's go with it here. Let's. So we're gonna graph cosine. This little piece right here, cosine of x divided by. Now the denominator does need a parenthesis around it because we're looking at one minus sine of x. Boom, good there. Then I guess we can graph the other one as well here. So this one needs a parenthesis on top now. That's one plus sine of x. Close off the sine function, then close off the numerator itself, divide by cosine of x on the bottom this time. So I'm looking for somehow two different graphs coming out, or if I just see one graph, graph, then that's it. The only thing is, because these are trig functions here, maybe best to do go to zoom and see this little guy number seven called z trig. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Z trig kind of puts it into a zoom trigonometry. So press number seven or go down by arrows, whichever you like. Click enter and it should automatically start. Here's my first function. Wow. Cool. And next one should be my second function. Okay. 
All right, so I guess let's do this here just to sort of see it, make sure it's correct here. I didn't see any graphing, right? I didn't see any extra graphing done. Let's go to zoom now, zoom, and let's zoom out number three. And you can just press number three if you like. Ah. From zero, zero. So you want to still be in the middle, but you're going to click on zoom out. And let's watch this again. So there's my. I click zoom out and it's. It showed me to zero zero, but it's Wait. not zooming out. You have to hit uh -huh. enter again. Click enter again. Wow, that's probably been my problem the whole time. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah. Each Wait, time it wrapped it in a really weird way. Mm -hmm. It like put the curves in first and then drew the line. Mine is, uh -huh. mine is different. Mine's just all the same line. Yeah, the same here. Yeah, I can't see yours, but I'm assuming they're the same. What did you guys get? Is your window at? Because my not yeah, All the same? Yeah. Okay. All the same. Okay. Oh yeah. Grant, there's my window. So did you guys get the same graph? Yes. Right, it didn't graph over like another graph, right? No, it's the same. Yeah, yeah. it's the same. Okay. Okay, are we good there? Yeah. Let's see. What, George, are we good? And then Nicholas, are we good? Just the line. <laughs> oh, are you in radi or degree mode? Because that's what always happens to me. Yeah. I'm just like, wow, look, it's a straight line. That is not correct. And then you can also go to the wrong shutter Wrong. I'm trying. It's okay. So let's go to the time where you have to go to the So you're in the green mode. Oh. <laughs> That's your oxygen. So the X will be from. I forgot negative sign to show my minimums and maximums were the same. <laughs> <laughs> this is a single point at 10. Mm -hmm. That was my entire graph. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. The trip function that's supposed to be repeating is just a single <laughs> point. <Yeah. laughs> so. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> I wrote <laughs> <laughs> Funny story, actually. so which means the second graph, the second graph is really just the graphing right on top of the first graph again. Yeah. Nicholas, are we good with that one? Yeah. So okay. why did it, why oh, sorry, it is. Has... Yeah. Oh, mine's a different window. That's why. Why are we different? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> you're fine. Yeah, when, uh, when you zoom out <laughs> um, on the calculators here, it will pick how much of the zoom out window you're going to get. Oh. It yeah, it to zoom out again when it's not more. Or is that uh huh. It'll zoom out some more, yeah. Grant, yeah, oh, we're good. Go ahead. Talk to me. It is an identity in my calculation. It's just refusing to oh graph the second one, right? Correct. Yeah. So you're okay. having a first graph is graphed. The second one is just being graphed right on top of the first one. So you can't see it because there's no new graph. So that's what you in look for. Case, you look for a different graph. Who put it with like zoom out? It's like so many little lines. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <That's not supposed laughs> Oh, that one's not You have to go farther. That's 
we are here yeah, just to walk this. Yeah, and there's no, it's supposed to be gazing upon this. You go farther. <laughs> no, the whole thing is just like black. Look, oh, it's not like oh, a good pattern. It's like one of them going up. Oh, that's Interesting. That's yeah. just not to be this perceived by people. Like 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 <laughs> don't know what we did from there. I don't think that's what it's supposed to do. All right. Let's go with it here. It is an identity, and with a few more minutes left, we have to prove it. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, I think we'll go this way here. I think it has to do with the Pythagorean theorem. So if you go like this, I'm going to take the left side and I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by. Sine of X. So I'm just taking this little piece right here. The uh, reason I put one plus sine x because I need that on top anyways. Notice it's on top of the right hand side. And let's just see what happens here as I multiply these guys together. Uh, this becomes cosine x on top with a one plus sine x. On the bottom, I have a one minus sine x and a one plus sine x. One minus sine squared x. Perfect. Uh huh. See the difference of two squares. When you multiply them together, <laughs> you're going to get one minus sine squared x. We good there? Which I think is the same thing as um, cosine. Cosine squared x, is that right? And I think you can finish it off from there. The cosines are going to cancel. That one cancels one of those, and we get exactly what we want. We have a one plus sine x on top, cosine x on the bottom, which is exactly the same as the other side. Okay. Jamming. Okay, let you guys finish that one off. Is that okay? You guys can do just one more step, which is to write out the fact they're both exactly the same on both sides and put a box. Mm -hmm. I, and then the honor section. Why did I put it in here? I don't know. I figured. <laughs> <laughs> See, given the fact that you know the sum formula for sine and cosine, can you prove the sine formula for tangent? Let's go. Sine formula for tangent is this one right here, but it tells you what you know. You you have to prove this based upon what you know for sine and cosine. And so as you're proving it out, this is what we did in in class as well, but really it's just doing this right here. Right there, there's your tangent formula based upon your knowledge of the sine and cosine sum formulas. And then we just keep on going. This becomes sine of A, cosine B plus cosine of A. And there was a little tiny trick here, I believe, somewhere along the line here. Cosine, on the other hand, is cosine of A, cosine of B minus. This morning. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, with this one here, let's see. I think it is. We just divide everything by. Should I give you the trick, honor students? Maybe I should. Yeah, yeah. Please. <laughs> Dear God, please. <laughs> I mean, we did it in class. Oh, we kind of have the trick. Uh huh. It is uh, for for tangent, particularly it's cosine a, cosine b, cosine a, cosine b everywhere. And when we do that here, it becomes uh, cosine. Let's write it up a little bit higher here. Oh, actually, let's do this. So cosine A is the only thing that's left over with a cosine B on the bottom. This is plus. The cosine A is canceled, leaving us with sine B over cosine B. This just becomes a one. And this becomes sine A over cosine A multiplied with sine B over cosine b and i think we should know what that is one more step to do right over here as georgia gets blinded by the sun <laughs> and so let's change all the signs of our cosines to tangent and voila we got ourselves the sum formula for tangent wow. all right with that we'll call it a day All right, do bring your calculators on Wednesday because you'll need it here. And I'll give you the formula sheets as well, and I'll give you an extra sheet of paper if need be as well. And then will the challenge problems be due like tonight or Tuesday? Thank you so much. Uh, challenge problems will be due uh, tomorrow night then. Yeah, I'll, tell you, I'll write it in. Thank you for reminding me about it. Thank you. All right. Have a great day, guys. Mm -hmm. Big challenge problems. Thank you so much. Likewise to yours. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mantia. See you. Okay, great. So, yeah, with my ADHD, my problem with math, math is like the hardest thing for me. I'm more of like an English person where I can just like get through things quicker. But with math, it's like, it's hard to explain. Like when I'm in class taking a test for math, for some reason, I'm like super aware of everyone around me. And so it's really hard for me to like work fast and focus on everything because I'm thinking like, Everybody else is probably like four problems ahead of me, uh -huh. like they're gonna turn it all in. And so then I'm just like second guessing everything. And it's just been like that for years. Like I have learned that like I can't do homework with other people because I'm just like slower than them when I'm thinking about how fast they're going. Gotcha. Um, Which so I want to say that's problem. not true at all. <laughs> yeah, and I just like get in my head with that. And like I know that I get in my head, but mm -hmm. even with knowing like that, sure. I still can't like get out of that. So that's my reasoning for doing it at home because of, like it would still be time but without um other people like taking the test so me, it's just like oh, here, like, yeah, sure. yeah, so like so uh -huh. i also got that when they take class yeah, up to you i i I'll, up to you i you can just be absent that morning or you can do it inside the office if you like. Would you rather do it there? Just put it into the office. Does that help you when you're just sort of by yourself? It helps a little bit. I've tried taking a test in there too, but it's yeah, like we did that first time, right? And we did a test for second test or something. Yeah, something like that. Like I haven't finished it or something. But it's like I don't know. It still feels like 
that weird pressure and that's kind of like the I think it was better, but it still was. Okay. Um, okay, great. I like whichever way you want to work. If you want to work through it and you need any class or something like that, do you have first period as well or no? Yes. Okay. So you can Otherwise, you can yeah. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna give it up to you. If you say it with Mr. and I want to kind of push through it, and I'm gonna sort of do it because I had one in college and college maybe not gonna do the same. And if you say this is my year to sort of push through something like that in my life, that's cool. If not, then uh, then don't be here on Wednesday. Show up for first period, but not the zero period. And then, uh, then I'll know during class I will email to you to take care of class. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll let you know by like tomorrow night when once I'm like finished studying to see where I'm at. If, like I think okay, I'm confident enough with this to see like I can't really get through this. But if I'm still like, if it's hard for me to draft, especially if I'm not super solid on something, but like I did that. To, yeah, I have to do Yeah, with the practice test with everything else to see how you're feeling uh -huh. about it. Yeah. So I'll email you guys. Sure. Yeah. And this is for you. This is for you to like you want to challenge yourself as a student. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. By the end of this year, I would like to be able to um, like take an impacting year. For sure. I don't want to go into college still like feeling like I need to take the test. But sure. Yeah. Absolutely. You got it. All right. Thank you for this. I'll let you sure. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you. Good morning, guys. Almost there. Let me wipe tables here. Blah, 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 blah. 
Better than my life? What? My life's amazing. I love my life. I love what you just said. Hey, you're right. You're right. You're right. I think my life is pretty damn good. I think my life is pretty damn good. Oh, come on. It is better than vampire. Wait, none of you are in that picture. Are you married? I am. I wasn't asking you. I know you're married. You're married to like four people. That's not important. I don't think I can be married now. Yeah, but who cares about the law? Are you married? No. He's not married. To me? Uh, yeah. Uh, can we cancel the test? Thank you so much. Um, no, but thanks for the flowers, though. No, no, Tristan, you gotta take it back and have the next seizure. Yes, Tristan, you gotta take it back and have the next seizure. Can I have the flowers? I want the rose. I want the rose. It's too long. It's too long. It's too long. Two of them. I'll share with you, Camille. I'll share with you. After class, though. Too much. Guys, guys, real quick. Let's go. Temp like during class temporarily or for the day temporarily? Right after class. Like 30 seconds. Sure. Okay. Thanks, guys, so much. So, so Athens House, Tristan, is this uh, is this flowers for bribing particularly, yes. or is this is flowers just to give? No, he's bribing. It's just a bribe, right? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys, so much. Hmm. Thank you, Tristan. <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna put it right here. Okay. Boom. Hey, I heard that. <laughs> you know you can't read. That's why you asked me to read it for you. You know, just because I can't doesn't mean actually I don't care. I can't read either. <laughs> well, okay. How can you not read? I'm not a more books. You can't read because you're a vampire. All I do is look up.